Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel that is all about artificial intelligence, blockchain and technology in general. Today we're gonna predict the price of Bitcoin using long short-term memory recurrent neural networks. And the coolest thing about this is that this software is all open source, it's all available on our community and you can go and download it. Even though you're not a programmer you can just grab this software for free and soon enough you can use this software for any cryptocurrency guys. So stay tuned and let's get going. So we'll know in the latest time the Bitcoin price has surged like crazy it's been on fire it's it's been it's been hectic guys it's been a hectic time but we also know that a lot of people lost a lot of money and you know they're down here right now we want to help them up right so we've been developing some really cool tools and today I'm gonna present the uh, LSTM network that is able to predict the Bitcoin prices so this is just the first model of a series of models that we're gonna create in order to predict cryptocurrency prices what we've chosen to do here is to use recurrent neural networks and why is that well recurrent neural networks are able to remember values over arbitrary time. So how do recurrent neural networks do this? Well basically as you can see in this figure here they don't only take the current input as their input but they also take the previous input as well and take that in consideration when doing some model. In this way they can have some kind of memory. What we've been focusing on today is to use LSTMs or long short-term memory recurrent neural networks. They are fascinating. They're a type of recurrent neural network but they don't have issues with exploding and vanishing gradients and other recurrent neural networks usually do. So the LSTM is built like this. It consists of a cell, it has an input gate, it has an output gate, and it has a forget gate. And you can go and read more about that in detail, but it's basically what it sounds like. You have some input, and you have some output, and you have some memory right to forget. And these gates control these. So why the name long short-term memory? Well basically, as of this structure, the long short-term memory recurrent neural networks has a short-term memory that it can remember over a long time. Hence the name long short-term memory recurrent neural network. So guys, now we're gonna dive deep into the code. So I'm gonna put the link in the description to the repository here and also to some other interesting resources on recurrent neural networks and predicting stock prices, etc. that you can go read about. But before we do this, I just want to emphasize again that all this code is all open source and it's available for you. You can download it anytime. And if you want us to continue to upload models like this to predict cryptocurrencies prices or stock prices or whatever we want to predict, hit the like button down here to your right to just, you know, show us that you're glad that this software is actually open source for you to download anytime for free by us. So guys, let's look at some code. So first of all, you would have to download the repository. I assume that you have done that already, but if you haven't, go on the repository and you have instructions there to how to download, how to install and everything that you need. But now when you download the software and you're ready to go, let's start. So first of all, you want to run JPyter Notebook. So basically, JPyter is the software we use to have our code here in our browser and the notebook is just to run the notebook. So when we do that, we will have a browser window popping up for us in just in a second. And here we will have our software. So as you can see, we have a lot of files here. But what we want to focus on is the file called main. Yeah, .ipynb, which is the JPyter Notebook. And here we have our software. So I'm going to go through this code a little bit just to tell you about it and show you how it works. So as you can see, first of all, we import all of the libraries that we need. So we'll need some libraries for this. We're using NumPy and Pandas and we're using Keras for our machine learning here. Keras is a wrapper around TensorFlow, that's how I use it. And I think it's so good to use, especially if you're starting out in machine learning, you know, because you don't have to work with all the nitty gritties. It's really just a really good abstraction on good frameworks. Then we're gonna use matplotlib to plot our things and we're gonna use utilities for just fetching some data. So let's run that. So as you can see here, uh, we are looking at Bitcoin right now. The cool thing about this is that right now this software only has support for Bitcoin, but in just a few days, when I've finished the code, you will be able to input any cryptocurrency there, just change that very line there to BTC to something else, and you will have that very currency. So guys, this is really cool. Even though you're not a software engineer, you can just download this software, install it, change one line of code from BTC to Ethereum to start predicting Ethereum prices instead of Bitcoin prices. And I think that's fascinating. But right now you can only use Bitcoin. So guys, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, stay tuned for you know upcoming videos where I'm gonna tell you about the progress about this. We're gonna create a lot of different models to predict prices and to predict if you're going to a growth market or sideways market. So as you can see, we are now fetching the data and we are also loading the data here. So we're basically caring about the close prices of the cryptocurrency here, of the Bitcoins. And we're reshaping that uh, just basically to get it into a lot of rows and we have the closing price in each column. So only one column and a lot of rows. 
What we then have to do as we are working with time series here and we're working with sequences in the LSTM here. So we don't only want to take, you know, this very sample in consideration, but we actually want to look at the history as well, right? That's the time series we're working with here. So the function we have here, take our data and it creates small sequences of it. So instead of just taking that very sample, it creates some kind of context here and that very context you can choose here in the look back. So right now saying I want to look at this and I want to look at the 10 previous days as well with closing prices. So in that way you get some kind of context when you're doing the uh, predictions here. We also have to scale the data and this is crucial. As you can see here, we're scaling a min-max scaler between 0 and 1 because you know the Bitcoin price has gone from what, $300 up to about $20,000 in just a small amount of time. So if we're comparing these values, our algorithm will be really confused. We have to make them small so they're almost similar. So we squeeze this number between 0 and 1 instead. Very crucial guys, don't forget about that. So it's just called you know, normalizing our data. After that, we just transform it to make it look good and then we're splitting our data into training and test sets. So when we're working with time series, we take some data here in the beginning and then we take some for training and then we take the later data as the test data as these are dependent, you know, the today's date in, and what happens today is dependent on what happened a few days ago. So we can't just randomly choose our test sets here. We have to do it like that. And that's how we choose our training sets. We create this training sets X train Y train. So we call the function we had up here to create our data sets where we created the small sequences. And this is the data that we're then gonna use for training. So after doing this, we then go down here to build our model. And this is an LSTM model here in Kara. So I'm basically saying here how I want it to look like, how many LSTM cells I want to have, and then also adding dropout. And dropout is a way to regularize. So basically we're deactivating neurons by random in our network so they don't become codependent. If you go back and watch my video, I'll announce it here. I uploaded it yesterday. It's about overfitting. I'm talking a bit about uh, dropout. It's a good thing to know about. So go back and watch that video if you haven't heard about it before and you, you won't regret it, guys. It's, it's a good thing to do. So after creating a model here, we want to fit it right. We want to train our model with our data. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're running 30 epochs right now. So basically this model is gonna train 30 epochs to see what happens. And you can see it's training right now on the data we have. And it's just gonna do that for how many times we tell it to do it. So if you would do this and do it for real, you would probably do a lot more epochs and we you play around a bit with the batch sizes and various hyperparameters. But right now I'm just doing this for purpose of showing you. So you can go there, you can try it out, try different regularizers, learning rates, epochs, etc. So go and play with that guys and tell me what you think about it. Now we can plot our loss here. So we can see the loss function is going down for both training and validation. It's a bit up and down, but if you tweak your hyperparameters, you probably get some good value. Values. Then we want to predict, right? So in the code we have here, we are able to predict the Bitcoin price. So the original data set here is the green line, as you can see underneath here. And the red line we have here is the training set as predicted by our neural network here. And the blue line here is the price predicted on our test set. So that was not with us when we were training. And as you can see, it's doing really well. It's actually following the original price in a very good manner. So if we tweak this a little bit more, I'm sure we will have some very cool things here. But now you're wondering, well, how do we predict future prices? And that's probably what you want to do, like, because you don't want to lose money, you want to make the big bucks. Well, you will have to stay tuned. I'm working a bit on this. In a few days, I'll probably upload a video where we are going to predict some future prices. I'm just telling you, this is not some financial advice. This is just playing around with some basic machine learning, so don't take it too seriously, but it's really good to know about, and it's kind of fascinating, right, that you can use these, and, and maybe not as a sole source of knowledge for your Bitcoin or cryptocurrency investing, but maybe to go and get a sneak peek at time. So guys, stay, stay subscribed to get that in a few days so you know when it's happening. So guys, this is a very intense introduction here to uh, machine learning, introduction to predicting prices in LSTMs. I know there's a lot that's left out there, but the good thing about this is that we can upload videos every day, right? And that's what I'm doing. So basically I'm uploading videos like this every day to keep you tuned with what's happening in machine learning, what's happening in blockchain, what's happening in AI. Guys, this is a source of knowledge right here. I hope that you enjoy this. And I want to actually make some kind of competition here because we all know that the various cryptocurrencies, especially the altcoins, depend on the larger coins, right? So I'm gonna put up a challenge. You can think about it as a coding challenge. I'm gonna go for two weeks. What I want you to work with, what I want you to analyze here is in a few days I will upload code so you can analyze Ethereum as well and various older altcoins. I want you to go there 
and I want you to analyze the price of some altcoin but also taking the Bitcoin price in consideration. So you're not only looking at the price data for that very altcoin, you're also looking at what's happening with Bitcoin and seeing if there's a correlation there and seeing if your prediction is better with the Bitcoin data as well and not only use looking at the altcoin data but actually looking at both. So guys, this is a competition that will go on for two weeks. I'm gonna put the rules for this competition here in the description down below so you know what to do but I'm really looking forward to seeing the code that you're writing here, your progress and really cool stuff you're coming up with. It's going to be really fascinating and if you're developing some good code here, chances that I will talk about it here on my channel are very very high. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this and hit the like button if you think this is fascinating, if you think it was a good introduction to machine learning for predicting Bitcoin prices. And uh, yeah, if you aren't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down here to your left and the bell right next to it to get notified on new content. And you know, if you follow me for a while and be like, hmm, this dude is doing really cool things, you could support me on Patreon. It's a good way to get involved, get better connection with me, you and I, and also support me in doing and creating these videos. And guys, as always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll talk to you soon again.